Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now. Time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. Feedback. 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 Hi, this is Theo Groton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. I like seeing that. I like that commercial, the beating. <laughs> and happy Monday to all of you who are tuned in today, which is May the 17th. May the 17th is one of those days that has been um, extended for those who had not uh, filled out their taxes and returned them to the Internal Revenue. And uh, for those who still have not done it, you can apply for an extension, I'm told. Also, yesterday, the BD was the birthday of Congressman John Conyers. So his birthday is uh, May the 16th. And as we have been told, he uh, served for 40 years. Anyway, um, I want to say good morning. Uh, good morning to Katrina. And good morning to Carl and, and to Al and, and Roy and Kirk. We haven't heard from Kirk in a while. I, Hope he's doing well. And um, there's just so, so much going on. And I got to say good, good morning to uh, Michael and uh, Rosa and, and to Vera and Ron and Al. And who you want to say good morning to? I'll say shout outs to, uh, first I want to just welcome everyone. Happy Monday. And send shout outs to Brother Keith Hines, uh, Sly Soul. Brother Gene Hackett, uh, also uh, Brother Dennis Smith, uh, both new viewers uh, and very old buddies of mine, and to my regulars, uh, Jackie and Ruth Ann, and uh, there's so many of you, it still says we, we got a list, uh, we could take the whole show with the <laughs> list, but let me ask you uh. all who are viewing to uh, ask your family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, acquaintances, and associates to tune in also. Mm -hmm. And as you'll note, there are uh, two numbers at the bottom of the screen. So we're going to ask you to write those down because as I always say, and Theo asked me to tell you all, as you can see, <laughs> have pen and paper handy because you never know what information you may want to record for future reference. That's right. Absolutely. And there's, there's just so much that's that, uh, going on. I, I want to ask everyone to Follow Hood Research on Twitter. Those of you who, those of you who are on Twitter, Hood Research has a Facebook page and a website, as well. The telephone number uh, for Hood Research is area code 248-234-2371. And I want you to know that uh, each Saturday we have an afternoon with Hood Research on the phone, and. Uh, you need to call 1-978-990-5000. And the access code is 338-729. Press the pound key and join the conversation. Uh, this past Saturday, uh, we had uh, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy on with us. Uh, Senator Coleman Alexander Young II. 
Uh, who else did we have? We had um, uh, Beverly Kendall Walker on with us. We had uh, uh, Keith Williams on with us. And you know, there's this um, a petition going around uh, to place the question of reparations on the ballot in November. And uh, he was explaining that. And also, the county is looking for uh, new sheriffs. So we can have a new sheriff in town. <laughs> hey, that's what we need, a lot of new sheriffs in town. You know? So uh, they're looking uh, for that. And uh, I think they have a 200 or so uh, openings. And, uh, of course, the city of Detroit is looking to hire some police officers as well. And I certainly hope that uh, they will continue getting applicants from inside the city. I look forward to having people from our community, our neighborhoods, on a police force as opposed to an occupying force that comes from Holly, Michigan. As you know, was it in Holly, Michigan, where the Ku Klux Klan wizard was uh, stationed? I'm, I'm I think Holly, it, Michigan. It's with an H, I'm sure, but yeah, Hooterville. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was Hooterville. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, but just to have them from our community, it um, uh, makes you feel better to, to have, have your own. And, th and there are more, there's more employment uh, for the residents within our own community. And it just well. hit me, Howell, Michigan. Home oh, of KKK. Howell. Yeah. Oh, Howell, Michigan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Howell, I've, Michigan. I've been out there, I know. Oh, Lord, yes. At where, where is the college uh, central? Where is central? The central. College? That's is a good question. Howell? I'm not really sure. Isn't Howell? If somebody knows where uh, central uh, college is, let us know. I, I asked that question because there were some adults, there's some black students there. Matter of fact, one is an in-law of mine. And, and some folk didn't like the fact that black students were going there. Now, this was decades ago. And they started throwing bricks and breaking windows. And, and the, the students had to put the mattresses against the window. And yeah, it was terrible. So my husband and other relatives went up to you know, rescue uh, some of the students. You That's know, what was going on. It's interesting uh, when you say that because a lot of times they say that some of the racism uh, and supremacist uh, mindset is based on the fact that they don't see us as humans. However, their behavior doesn't reflect them as humans. So uh, I'm just, you know, I just, I, I've observed that and say, yeah, you say <sighs> dehumanize us, but you've dehumanized yourself by the vicious acts you do. So who's really the human? <laughs> yes, that's an excellent point. And you know, that's what is, is going on now with the uh, actions, unfortunately, of our people uh, in the uh, music industry. If you remember back in the uh, 60s when um, Motown was producing uh, acts, singers, performers, and Maxine Powell had her own studio and, and her responsibility for Motown was to teach the young performers how to walk, how to sit, how to act, how to get in and out of a limousine, uh, how to dress. And, and then what it did was it caused the teenagers to want to look good as well. They wanted to dress. They wanted their hair to be done nicely. And nowadays, many of the performers look like they rolled out from under the bed, let alone in the bed. And when the Grammys came out and gave awards for this um, dirty music, I should say, it's the only thing I can think of at the moment, and the actions of uh, some of the performers that were uh, on the Grammy show, it was like you were watching a pornography uh, show right in your own living room. And then for the NAACP to turn around and do the same thing, what they did was support systemic racism because the music industry now tells our young performers, whatever you give me to produce, it's got to be as nasty as you can make it. Your actions got to be as dirty and as indecent as you can make them. 
and we'll put your record out. And that's what they've been doing. You know, it's interesting. I was looking at an interview last night. It was not that old an interview of Ice Cube from NWA. Mm -hmm. And he was saying when they made their music, which was laced with a lot of gangster and sexist and misogynistic type of uh, terminology, uh -huh. he said that when they came out, they didn't really think that their records would go in what you would consider the normal music bins. They put them over in the X-rated bins with like Red Fox and Richard Pryor. He said when he went into the store and actually found out that they had them out there available, you know, just for a general purpose and not in an X-rated thing, he said mm -hmm. he was shocked. And any said, age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then that's what launched uh, NWA and gangster rap because prior to that you didn't really have any sexist races I, actually it was conscious music mm -hmm. so 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 what you're saying i agree you know the the big corporate head says dirty as you can be mm -hmm. we're gonna put you on front street and leave mm -hmm. everybody who's talking about something worthy on back street right right and the ones that were on front street were african americans so it was an intentional plan to make the african american community as uh, gutter as they could. And, and then what happens is you get out the broad paintbrush and you paint all African Americans like that. And the image is international, so everybody in the world thinks mm -hmm. this is how they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and then um, something interesting I, that I came across was uh, the flower children, some people call them. And this, this was um, oh, during the 60s as, as well. And, and it, it was going on in, in the white community. And in the black community, we had said loud, I'm black and I'm proud, see. So somebody said, we can't have all these people getting together. Oh no, are you crazy? So about the end of the 60s, this person came out with a drug called LSD. And, and uh, he was looking for people to uh, experiment on. And he did. And, and they were floating around and their minds were off in the corner in the ceiling someplace and they saw me, yeah, I like this. So it became a menu item. This is around 1969. Sex and drugs and, and all of that came into the country freely. And um, then the um, end uh, was right after Woodstock. Uh, Woodstock was a concert. They had almost a half a million people in Upper New York. And everybody was well behaved. They had uh, entertainment and Folks were just giving away whatever was food and, and, and whatever other little items. And they were sharing, no problems. I said, no, nah, we can't have that. So the next concert was the um, Hells Angels. Yeah, and out it, in California. And, I, and, mm -hmm, and it all started going downhill from there. And I think at that concert, it was reported that somebody got killed. Whereas at Woodstock, it, it was, you know, happiness, let's get along. Uh, everybody was uh, minding their manners and all of that. No problems whatsoever. Now, what's interesting is that Hell's Angels was supposed to be the security out there in <laughs> California. Mm -hmm. Being a rock and roll guitar player, I, I follow that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but, but it turned out to be something just totally worse. And then, of course, LSD um, became, a like I said, a hot menu item. It, it just got more prevalent and more prevalent and sex and drugs, and, and, and now we got a mess out there. there. There was a slogan, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yes. And actually, a Harvard professor, Timothy Leary, I got one of his books also, mm -hmm. he was one of the major proponents uh, of using LSD. He, was, he used it on himself. Uh, and he said, turn on, tune in, and drop out. That was his uh, 
slogan, which became very popular in the uh, late 60s. Yeah, so he was not the only one, but he was one of the more eminent uh, Harvard professors mm -hmm. who actually took it. And uh, he wearing his little dashiki and beads and all them kind of things. And uh, and people just follow. I mean, you know. And his name again. Timothy Leary. Timothy Leary. He's Timothy Leary. I PhD, that. yes. I remember that name from something. Is and it's not coming to me right now, but uh, yeah, and and LSD was a big thing, real, really, and uh, it just as as time went on, it is uh, my opinion that the racists did not want the uh, kind of of uh, evolution that was happening at Woodstock to continue. They want people to be at each other's throats. They want racism to continue existing. They want hatred to get worse and worse and worse. Divide and conquer. It, exactly. And, and it got so bad that when you had the presidential election and uh, Donald Trump won, it was unleashing more hatred than this country had ever seen. It had gone from being undercover to shouting on the rooftops, and uh, that that just that's the kind of uh, hatred that enough people realized could not continue. And this past election that we had, they had to stand up and be counted, and uh, many people voted to get Donald Trump out of office. And uh, rightly so, because all of those people who were bullies, all of those people who were hatred, all of those police officers who enjoyed shooting our young men in the back, just continue to do that. They, they just, hey, I want to be a member of David Duke's gang, you know. And uh, so now um, the majority who uh, got Donald Trump out of office are facing a lot of this. And on January the 6th, it ain't really got wild. So, and and changed. recently, uh, within the last week or so, there were some people in Congress who were saying that it wasn't a rebellion, it wasn't an insurrection. But of course, these are the Republican right wing, but uh, uh, left of uh, sanity for sure that uh, they didn't see it in the same terms because they're still trying to diminish it. Uh, just like uh, now they've got this critical race theory thing where they don't want you to teach about slavery because it makes you anti -American. I mean, it's crazy, but we're dealing with crazy people. Yeah, well, isn't that the truth? Yes. But uh, I, I, I think it's, it's a, a mental problem to say they were just uh, good old boys and girls speaking out when they saw, if, if they were watching it at all, people got killed. They got killed on Capitol Hill. Did, didn't they think anything was important about that? It was terrorism. It was a riot. Yeah, and, and if they could have overthrown, which was the point, because they didn't want to have the election validated, they would have done that. It's only because uh, extra military uh, and law enforcement were brought out to kind of quell it, but they let them. And then, as we know, some of the military was involved in it as well, mm -hmm. as well as the police uh, who welcomed them in, which was kind of ironic because one of the people who one of the Capitol Police who died was actually a Trump supporter. But what? Yeah, one, he was, uh, he was oh. a Trump supporter, huh. but uh, he didn't realize because of his uniform that those insurrectionists would actually be the way that he died. Um, mm. so, so it's kind of crazy. And it's a lot of things they don't let out in the news that are newsworthy because mm -hmm. they know it puts a blemish on, on their agenda. So they just kind of... It become, like you said before, it becomes a story, and then mm -hmm. it's on the back page if, if somebody Caucasian did it, and then it disappears right. quickly. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Wow, that, that is interesting. And then I got to wonder, was he one of the ones who did not call for backup? Because they, they, it's, it was reported that there was uh, some inside assistance. And uh, a member of Congress had seen 
they they wear red shirts. I know they wear red hats, but they were wearing red shirts and hats. The fifth of January, and they were going on a tour of the Capitol. That's what the representative said. He said they didn't. Insur- <laughs> it wasn't insurrection. He said they were just going on a tour. Yeah, yeah. He had a- that, that was the day before <laughs> that. You know, and uh, they were casing the joint. Is what they were doing. Yes. Oh, we got a caller. Yes. Well, certainly when we want to hear from the caller. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? This is... Hello? Yes. Hello. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. This, this is James Ford. I'm in uh, Lake Lakeland, Florida, heading back to Detroit. Oh. I got a little news. All right. Lakeland, Florida call. All right. Yeah. What's well, the news? Yeah. I just want to say that um, I'm kind of getting a re... I'm, I'm getting a reflex. A, a, a reef. I can't hardly talk. But anyway, I'm gonna try to do the best I can because I can I can hear my voice. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, but anyway, I, the national newsletter, uh, the national talk newsletter will be coming out again. This will be the third edition. Okay. And I got some Kavanaugh from Chicago. Mm-hmm. He's gonna talk about the rappers. Oh, okay. And, uh, not only black rappers, Mexican rappers, white rappers, okay. Indian rappers, it's terrible. Oh, okay. okay. And then I got um, Al Martin. He's going to talk about the results of the uh, George Floyd uh, trial and what and the effects of that. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to have Big Mike from Jersey. He's going to be talking about suppressing the vote. Yes. And he's going he's to discuss that. Uh-huh. Then I got Doc Bender from Detroit. He's going to talk about 11 body camera shots of an incident that happened down in uh, somewhere in North Carolina. But the judge ruled that they're only going to use one blurry uh, camera shot. Oh. They're throwing, up, throwing out 11 shots. It's hard for me to talk. Mm. They, they're throwing out 11 body cameras. Mm. It's 11 cops, but they're only going to use one that? body camera, which God, is r- very blurry. Sound then, like the media said that sound like they're hiding evidence. Yeah. Wow. So, and then the other thing is, I'm going to talk about the pandemic uh-huh. and the effect that it's going to happen, and and what's going on with all kids, not black kids. White kids, Indian kids, all type of kids. The virtual learning situation is not good. Okay. Now, I have a statistic for you. They say, and I talk to people in Washington, D.C. My cousin is an educator, and she's in and out of there all the time. They say that if the kids miss, and they have two years of inadequate, inadequate learning, Right. It is a pipeline to prison. Yep. And that is how they design prisons if they miss in the third grade. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about that. Okay. And then the, the, the other thing, I w- I've spoken at three churches down here in Florida, and I'm going to, I have one clip from, and I'm going to play that one day next week and let you all hear it. And, and I, I talked to some churches in Florida. Okay. So okay. Now, Stop, James. James Ford. Yeah. Uh, can, can you uh, pause for station identification for us? Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank everybody for tuning in, and uh, we shall be back momentarily. You're watching Detroit's own WHPR TV. Detroit Live. This is Theo Burton from Feedback. You can watch me 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at WHPR TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR TV Now. Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. This is Bruce Simpson, your city of Detroit ombudsman. I am here to address all of your complaints and concerns. If you need assistance regarding city services, 
please contact my office at 313-224-6000 or contact us via email at ombudsman at DetroitMI.gov. This is Bruce Simpson, your City of Detroit Ombudsman. I'm James Ford, founder of the Obama Weekend and a partner of the Hood Research Team composed of the knowledgeable Theo Broden, the super analyst Henry, and the colorful Al Martin. This team discusses politics, seen and not seen, at the national, state, and local level. But to enhance the goals of this team, join or donate to Hood Research by visiting Twitter or Facebook, or visit hoodresearch.org, or call 248-234-2371. You can also join Hood Research on Phonecast every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time by calling 978-990-5000, access code 338-729. Thank you very much. Hey there, it's me, Butter, with my new book, The Many Adventures of These Nuts. Let's be nuts about our health. Join me and my friends, Wally Walnut, Almond Cruz, Pumpkin Spice, Chica Chaminsky, Morgan Raisin, and Halle Cranberry. Here with rhythm and song to share a fun way to stay safe and healthy. So together, we can all be nuts about our health. Ebook available now on Amazon. Or get a hardcover copy at www.thesenutstrailmix.com. That's nuts with a Z. How you see the world is everything. Oh my God, girl, you take all day. Oh, hush. How you doing, little The nice. people you trust. How are you? Stay safe. Go. Your community. You rolling with the pain today. I'm going to show you how it's done, pain. In the best and the worst times. Stop away from me! Ma'am, stop! Hola, como estas? Muy bien. I see myself Gracias. and the people I serve. Hi. Officer Hi, Luna, Officer Luna. Sweet. Girl, you know you can do my job, right? This is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pinda. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Mm. You can go to the App Store and uh, download. WHPR TV now. WHPR TV now. And have us along with you. How about that? And uh, every Saturday, know that you can have an afternoon with Hood Research from 2 p.m. until 6 p.m. If you are feeling down and out and just want some conversation and want to share something that you heard about or read about, join us on Saturday for an afternoon with Hood Research between the hours and of 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. And also, after we hear the rest of what uh, James Ford has to say, I'm going to tell you about a motorcade that's coming up in June. Mm. Okay, now, you're still with us, James yes, Ford? Yeah, I'm still with you. Okay. But after... After those five uh, very interesting articles, the main thing about this newsletter is you can advertise free on the back. You all you got to do is email me uh, at realgoodpresident44 at gmail.com or call me at five eight six nine one eight 
306 front, and I will make sure that you get a copy. And the only thing about the newsletter is that they cannot advertise any marijuana, medical, or what have you. And now the other thing is, if any listeners want to see what this newsletter about, I just shot a video. They can go to YouTube, James Ford, Real Talk, and they can see what I'm talking about. I just shot a new video. It's about a, it's about a minute and 10 seconds long, and I will tell them everything. And it's, it's made down in Lakeland, Florida. Mm. Go to James Ford, uh, Real Talk on YouTube, and they can see. And then the other thing is, if the next time I contact you on one of your shows, I'm going to play a little excerpt of the speech that I did at a couple of churches here, and they're trying to get me to do some more, but it's too hot down here. It's 95, and i got to get wow. out of here. So, <laughs> well, well, one last thing, brother. Uh, you said yes, your phone number real fast, so could you okay. repeat it slowly for people? Okay. 586 918 3061. 61, yes. okay. And mm -hmm. the, but the main thing is advertising costs. I am giving a person a chance to advertise free all over the nation. They can sit the Chicago, Seattle, anywhere. But I'm, I'm gone. So you guys have a good time up there, and I got to get away from 95. Okay. <laughs> uh, be safe. God all bless right. you. Thank you. you too. Thank you, brother. Oh, goodness. Okay. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how are you viewing us, please? Okay. Uh, my name is David. Thank you for calling, David. Okay. I watch your show regularly. Oh. Uh, I Thank see you have water there. You drinking Nestle water? We're supposed to be boycotting Nestle. Uh, no, Nestle, I don't. Nestle's the one getting the uh, getting all the water out of Michigan for four hundred dollars a year. Oh, it, it the, the what? Say it again. Nestle. Yeah. Are you drinking Nestle water? I'm trying not to, but what did you say about it? <laughs> Nestle is the one that paid four hundred dollars. To the state of Michigan, oh, that's right. To get all the water they want out of out, out of the lake, uh, that's right. Out of the ground. Plus the permits are two hundred dollars, and they got two permits. Yes, that is correct. Yes. Okay. What else? So I'm just saying. So we're, so not we're gonna, gonna be supporting. We're, we're not gonna get any more necessities. I'm glad you brought that to my attention. Okay. Yeah, we I agree also. With you. Uh, okay, that that'll be it. Thank you. Have a great day. You can. Thank you, you, bro. you didn't have. You had something else. You can go ahead. Well, I, I can't think of it right now, but uh, oh well, you can call back. We're on yeah. until ten thirty. So if you think of okay. it, call back. Thank you. Okay. For, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good note uh, to bring. We have to. Uh, one of the things, which is what you are going to discuss now, when we talk about uh, the tour, we're supporting black businesses. So one thing we don't want to do is support corporate America who rips off uh, the citizens for pittance and then they make uh, crazy money and, uh, and they're off uh, shore accounts and everything, just ripping off the people. But I know you want to share with everyone about the caravan. Yeah, I never could understand why Detroit didn't sell its own bottled water. But seeing as how they provide water for two-thirds of the whole state. Well, now, on the second Sunday of June, that's next month, the second Sunday of June, it is the 13th, that's the date, the 13th, the second Sunday of June. Hood Research is sponsoring another caravan inside the city of Detroit. We are going to meet up on Woodward Avenue at 8 Mile Road at 12 p.m. 12 p.m. Some people say 12 noon. 12 p.m. noon. Sunday, June 13th on Woodward Avenue at 8 Mile Road. And the reason is to caravan down Woodward Avenue. So, if you uh, experiencing cabin fever, we want you to join us 
And if you're not experiencing cabin fever, we want you to join us. Come on, get out, socialize. Because in the caravan, you're going to be safe. Safe, safe. We had a caravan on the 27th of February during Black History Month. It was extremely successful. And we got nothing but uh, accolades from that. Everybody enjoyed themselves. Well, on Sunday, June 13th, we're going to line up on Woodward Avenue at 8 Mile Road. And we're going to Caravan South, which is towards downtown, and learn about the businesses that are along the way. It was uh, really uh, nice to know that we have quite a few black-owned businesses on Woodward Avenue or right close at Woodward Avenue, such as this television station, WHPR, is on uh, 160 Victor Street, right off of Woodward Avenue. And um, Mama Shu, the lady who uh, has established some uh, safe houses for the children in the area, and she's the same lady who received, what was it, a $100,000 from, uh, um, gosh, this lady on TV, she has a talk show on TV. <laughs> I just, her name just escaped me that Not fast. Not Cameron Hall. Uh, no. Okay. Mm -mm. No, th th this lady's been receiving a lot of flack because she's gay. And uh, anyway, she uh, gave $100,000 to Mama Shu. And uh, so we will uh, let people know, you know, where, where her street is, which I think she's on, she's working on the second street now for the children, uh, safe places for them to come. They, they have uh, tutoring, they have a homework place, they get uh, food, uh, it, it's just nice to set up that she has established there. And uh, going on, on down, uh, the St. Regis Hotel is just off of uh, Woodward Avenue. And I would add that they just had a ribbon cutting ceremony for, I, I'm not sure of the name yet, I'll find out prior to that, for mm -hmm. a restaurant that relates to Joe Lewis and his uh, son or grandson was there at the ribbon cutting ceremony, which happened last week, but it's a black owned business as well. Mm -hmm. And they just opened, so there's gonna be a lot for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and um, we're going to culminate at Eastern Market and at Eastern Market, uh, Bert Deering has restaurants. And I say plural because he has since added a seafood menu. Mm. Uh, most people know that uh, on Saturday, he um, has a big um, um, barbecue that, that goes on there. And uh, for those who uh, go down to shop at Eastern Market and some of the other stores there, they also plan and have lunch at Burt's. Music? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. You yeah, can't yes. be it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can always get carryouts. But you know what? Uh, a Burt's Marketplace there uh, on Russell Street has had uh, tables and, and chairs out for decades you know and it's funny how the media has has during this past year with the pandemic etc talked about different restaurants that are are now setting up tables and chairs outside and some restaurant even had heat outside and 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 i thought mm, that's interesting bird has had that all all along <laughs> and people have enjoyed uh going down and had had the breeze outside and and the uh, socializing there. And you can always get carryouts from Burt's as well. And um, the uh, turkey burger uh, was uh, a big seller and uh, people always talked about his, his uh, good chicken wings. And now they can talk about his seafood menu. So anyway, um, that, that's the uh, end of our route. We're going to start at 8 Mile on Woodward and uh, end up at Easter Market at uh, Bird's uh, Marketplace. And I've got three quick uh, things that I want to share with you. 
One, I want to say congratulations to Rosalind, a.k.a. Roz Brewer. She's a former uh, Detroiter. Her parents worked in the automotive plant. She is the, as you may know or may not know, she is the uh, first uh, black female CEO of Walgreens. And last night she received an award from uh, TV One, Urban One, mm. which is Kathy Hughes, which mm -hmm. most of you uh, should be if you're not familiar with Kathy Hughes. So mm -hmm. since uh, Roz Brewer, again, is the CEO, first black female CEO of Walgreens, and she's a Detroiter, mm -hmm. I felt she deserved uh, to receive her props. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing uh, I'm very proud, two other things I'm very proud of. One, my niece uh, has been accepted to... Howard University uh, Law School. Oh, wow. And uh, I read the letter, you know, they were, it was very cordial. I said, we are so glad to have you become part of the uh, Howard University Law School. So she's going to be studying law at Howard University. And since it's an HBCU, of course, I'm exceptionally yes. proud of that. Oh. And the third, and so uh, shout outs to you, Leela. Love you. And oh, the wow. third shout out is to my granddaughter Kim, who's been on this program before. Uh, her last, she was 3.7, now she's 4.0, all A's. All right. So I gotta give a shout out to my granddaughter as well. So yeah. the academics are rolling in the family. Woo! <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, that is wonderful. That is really wonderful. And, and you know, um, it, it makes me feel good to, to hear that kind of good news. Because of the fact that the syndicated uh, 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 media and, and the systemic racists are trying to paint all of us. It's, it's not those black people over there. <laughs> all of us are being painted with the same brush. As if we are all participating in every negative aspect of life as you can think of. And we, we have whites acting really strange towards us because of that. You know, I, I think about Bob Law and one of the things that comes to mind when I think about this hatred is, is based on jealousy. Mm. Because when I look at how, and I've experienced this, uh, I'll give everyone just a real quick story. I remember uh, as an apprentice in the electrical trade, uh, I had to do, you know, just the apprentice type work. So I might have to clean out the little shanty we were in, mm -hmm. et cetera. So I remember uh, I would go out to get coffee for, uh, and, and snacks because we were working down in Greektown for the journeyman electricians. So a guy, Chris, white guy, says, uh, uh, says how do you want your coffee? And he said, black. He said uh, something about Ed's black, something like that. Uh, but the thing is, is that... Uh, I, you know, and as an apprentice, you try to respect your journeyman, right? Mm -hmm. But what I said to him is I said, well, uh, one thing I don't want to see, Chris, is I don't want to see you out on the beach in the summer trying to get a tan of any type, you know, <laughs> because, again, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So I'm just saying that to say that <laughs> uh, they, I mean, our music is international. You mm -hmm. mentioned Motown. Mm -hmm. Whatever we do, we put a stamp on it that the whole world knows about, whether it's Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, mm -hmm. Motown, Jimi Hendrix, you name it. Mm -hmm. our, our reach is global, right. and I believe it's jealousy that makes others. And the last thing I'll say on that mm -hmm. is I remember uh, some of you uh, – don't know his real name, which is Samuel Clemens, but Mark Twain said that when he was in London, he said he saw nothing more beautiful than to see the, the satin ebony skins of Africans walking through London, which was a, a far contrast for the pale faces that he was seeing. Of course, with him being Caucasian, you know, for him to diminish his and, and to uplift mm -hmm. our group because of, he said he saw nothing more beautiful than the beautiful satin skin of Africans. Mm. So again, I just uh, equate that with a certain amount of jealousy, which is why we're hated mm -hmm. because obviously our influence is uh, great. I mean, we're, our influence is greater than the Africans on the continent, the Africans who are in South America, but the American, Afri the African American in North America has the greatest influence of all. People, our culture influences everyone on the planet, mm -hmm. and there's no denying that. Yes, yeah, so true, so true. And even thinking about uh, recent decades and the kinds of contributions 
uh, that have been put out there in recent decades. You know, I mentioned before that all the mem members of Congress are all down on the floor and hiding from, from the terrorist onslaught on January the 6th. And somebody yelled out, reach under your chair, get the gas mask, and put it on. A black man invented that. Garrett Morgan. I said, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> they hate us so much, but yet they reached in this emergency, desperate to grab a gas mask that was invented by a black man. <laughs> and, and I had mentioned Bob Law, I forgot the quote up until this moment, but it fits right in there. It says, they don't hate us because we're black, they hate us because who they, they are. They are white. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, so, that. you know, we have to, but we have to learn that self-love, which is a problem that we have because we still hold on to the stereotypes of uh, mammy and step, step and fetch it, and we only see our eyes through that lens. So even though we should be exalting ourselves uh, and working with each other, which, which is our nature anyway, we tend okay. to... I uh, always want to associate. There's one other thing you said, Theo, I, I want to uh, say. Mm -hmm. When you said they were promoting these negative images, so they want all our girls to be Megan the Stallion, and they want mm -hmm. all our young men to be the baby, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to anything else. These are the images they want our children to, mm -hmm. uh, to act out or become characters of. Right. Yes, and I'm, I'm um, in the process of accumulating the... Uh, recent slang and I know it changes uh, <laughs> too regularly but anyway the slang that's being put out now as an example for anybody who has not heard this if you hear in one of the rap songs someone say I think the baby is one of the ones who says this spray the block he's not telling you to go water your neighbor's grass is telling you to go and kill anybody that you see outside. Spray the block. Mm, a new slang. How about that? And uh, unfortunately, uh, people who uh, don't allow, who limit themselves in the knowledge they accumulate, they will act out that, you know, they, without even thinking it. It's just like it takes a subconscious route, and mm -hmm. then before you know you're shooting indiscriminately. You don't care who gets hit, right. you know, elders, children, it doesn't right. matter. It's just just do it, and mm -hmm. uh, we, we've got to address that. We really have to address that yeah. in our community. And we've heard a few of those kinds of reports where um, a, a uh, person was shooting uh, in the direction of a, a number of people and a four-year-old child got hit. There's nothing a four-year-old child could have done to, you know, to deserve something like that. And uh, anyway. unfortunately, I know you've uh, spoke about this before also, Theo, about the whole idea of subliminal seduction. Yes. And they had that book back in the day. Yes. I, I probably still got it somewhere. Mm -hmm. But how, if you hear something... I heard something last night also that made me think. It says, if you say something loud enough and long enough, even if it's a lie, people will start to believe it. I mean, just like uh, uh, he lost the election, right? Yes, he yes. Loud, loud <laughs> the, the, they call it now the big lie. Yeah. <laughs> they should be talking about the big liar. <laughs> it was interesting to, to learn that he's still at Marlago down in Florida because... Uh, it had been reported that uh, that site was rented out for various events and that anyone who stayed there could not stay there more than 20 days. And somebody had said, well, he, if he comes down here, he can only be here 20 days. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> He's still there. So uh, I guess that did not apply to him. Mm. Yeah, and there's some neighbors who, who were probably thinking about, man, we need to move from here <laughs> just because. Let's, right. let, let's go to South Beach or whatever. Somewhere. From here. <laughs> right. Oh, goodness. It, it is so sad. You, you, you laugh to keep from getting angry, you know. And um, this year... 
We also have to think about our local election. And we're going to have um, a vote on the, uh, on the ballot for the mayor, the council, uh, city clerk, um, who else? And I forget somebody. I'm sure I forgot somebody. Um, and then we have some uh, ballot questions. And one of the questions which is being uh, challenged is, is the uh, charter, right. whether we want to approve the charter. And, and we are the ones who um, participated in making changes to our charter. So there, there is some um, pushback on that, and there was a vote taken by the election uh, commission, and it is going to be on the ballot, whether or not we want the changes that have been proposed uh, for this particular uh, one that's out now. So people need to um, learn everything they can about the changes, about the charter, and be ready to vote. That's August the 3rd. It is going to be on the ballot. The question about changes on our charter will be on the ballot August the 3rd. And I want you all to keep in mind that a lot of people who oppose the charter revisions and changes don't even live in the city of Detroit. <laughs> that should tell you how mm -hmm. important it is because if outsiders uh, are trying to influence what happens inside of our city, then mm -hmm. it's certainly they're not saying anything for our own good. Uh, okay. it's, it's to work for them, and even to the the top political f official of the state, who uh, the governor, I just say it like that, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't approve of it. But uh, and, and Theo can definitely tell you more than myself about this. The charter is the constitution on how the city is run. Mm -hmm. It is the guideline that everything has to follow behind. Now, of course, we would hope that city council would uh, work to implement uh, some of the things because sometimes they drag their feet. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing, uh, because we're approaching the top of the hour for the break, mm -hmm. another thing to take note of is that uh, four council seats will... Uh, at least four council seats will be available during this election. So if you're not registered, or somebody in your house is not registered and they're trying to suppress the vote anyway, make sure that you get all your paperwork and everything right because you can't sit on the sidelines when everything's going on on the field and we're on the field. Yes, absolutely. You can always double check to make sure that uh, you're registered with the clerk. The telephone number for the city clerk's office is 313-876-0190. Again, that's 876-0190. And, and let me say this. Caller, stay on the line because we're at the top of the hour, so we have to take this uh, hard break. But we'll get right to you right after the break. So just everyone stay tuned and get your pen and paper handy as well. And we will be back momentarily. You're watching Detroit's own WHPR TV, Detroit Live. Hi, this is Thabiti Pinda from the Feedback Program. You can watch me 24 hours a day, seven days a week on WHPR TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR TV Now. Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Hey there, it's me, Butter, with my new book, The Mini Adventures of These Nuts. Let's be nuts about our health. Join me and my friends, Wally Walnut, Almond Cruz, Pumpkin Spice, Chica Chaminsky, Morgan Raisin, and Halle Cranberry. Here with rhythm and song to share a fun way to stay safe and healthy. So together, we can all be nuts about our health. Ebook available now on Amazon or get a hardcover copy at www.thesenutstrailmix.com. That's nuts with a Z. This is Bruce Simpson, your city of Detroit ombudsman. I am here to address all of your complaints and concerns. If you need assistance regarding city services, please contact my office at 313-224-6000 or contact us via email at ombudsman.com 
at DetroitMI.gov. This is Bruce Simpson, your City of Detroit Ombudsman. I'm James Ford, founder of the Obama Weekend and a partner of the Hood Research Team composed of the knowledgeable Theo Broden, the super analyst Henry, and the colorful Al Martin. This team discusses politics, seen and not seen, at the national, state, and local level. But to enhance the goals of this team, join or donate to Hood Research by visiting Twitter or Facebook or visit hoodresearch.org or call 248-234-2371. You can also join Hood Research on Phonecast every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time by calling 978-990-5000, access code 338-729. Thank you very much. Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now. Time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. Can I ask you a question? Why did you get vaccinated? Try to get back to some type of normal life. I'm tired of being cooped up. I love to travel and I'm ready to get back to it. I like to get back to my grandmother's hugs. I really like being around people. It's not the same doing it virtually. We miss the touch and then dancing together and laughing together and singing together. Why did you get vaccinated? It gives us hope. Oh, the shot is giving me a peace of mind. Hey, Granny, I'm coming to hug you one day soon. Feedback. 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 Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on... Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. 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 Along with you. And thank you so much for staying tuned to Feedback a positive image production by Hood Research. We are glad that uh, you chose to tune in this morning. And we also uh, want to uh, encourage you to join us on Saturdays as well. And I think I mentioned early on that we had uh, uh, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy on the, the line with us this past uh, Saturday. And we had Senator Coleman uh, Alexander Young the second on with us. and. Beverly uh, Kendall Walker was on with us. She's a candidate for city clerk. And we had uh, Keith Williams who was on talking about the uh, petition that is being uh, passed around to put reparations on the ballot in November. And also the fact that the uh, uh, Wayne County Sheriff Department is uh, asking uh, for applicants and I certainly hope that uh, they, as well as the Detroit Police Department, get some applicants because it's so much better to have residents from the city in which you live be in those departments rather than the occupying uh, army uh, coming in. And you know, Thabidius, it's just um, 
uh, annoying to me to find that people are able to take these cars outside of our city um, because they are a deterrent to crime as they're parked in, in the cities where many of them live. Now we have some people on the line and we want to get to them. WGPR Detroit HD2. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. FM 88.1 WHPR, Highland Park. WVIE 107.3 FM Charlotte, Amalia, Virgin Islands. Hello, caller. Uh, welcome to the program. Could you give us your name and how you're viewing us, please? I'm having a hard time viewing y'all this morning on my laptop and on my tablet. It keeps freezing the off. Can you hear us? I, no, but I can hear, hear you on the phone, but I can't see or hear you guys. On your tablet? Uh, on your it keeps tab. going off and on on my tablet and my laptop. I hmm. try to TV, but the TV brings your show up. It brings all those old shows up. Uh, rerun shows. I wonder, but anyway, it, I did get to hear you guys talk about What is the building that you're in? I want some, I, I hope some other people can call in and let us know how their reception is as well. Okay, you have to share yeah. something with us this morning? Oh, I was, I, I did get to hear you guys talk about the charter, and I'm glad that the charter will be on the ballot. Mm -hmm. I just hope the information will go out in time for people to make uh, intelligent choice to vote yes. Mm -hmm. uh, because they have been working very hard to keep the information out of people's uh, yes. distance so that they won't even know. It's people out here that don't even know a charter exists, right. let alone what good the charter is to support the people's needs mm -hmm. and not the corporate greed. Right. Well, you, you know, uh, it's, it's interesting that um, government is not taught in school anymore. It needs to be okay. taught in the elementary school as well as the high school. But uh, when when you think about those important subjects being removed from the school system, huh, that sounds mm -hmm. more like they're trying to dumb down the people, making it more uh, <clears throat> interesting to get involved in negative activities so that they can get on the on the road to prison that's where the money is for those who are involved with systemic racism uh, the same way that they don't want you to know about the true history exactly that you are capable and your true identity and mm -hmm. your true capabilities mm -hmm. that always outshine right and, and all that uh the world the right has benefited from us everyone else is getting Right, yeah, you, right. as you know, in Texas, uh, and there are a few other uh, Western or, or, or semi-Midwestern states are uh, vehemently opposed to the uh, critical race theory because they feel like it shames or shines a bad light on America. In other words, they just don't want history to be known. Uh, and then some have tried to diminish the impact of slavery. Some have even said that it was uh, worthwhile to have slavery and we should be happy. I mean, but again, they're on the defensive now. And I guess like any boxer, once you got somebody on the ropes, just keep beating them and beating them until, you know, mm -hmm. you have to beat the truth into them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you yeah. said, if you tell a lie long enough, people will begin to believe it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, well, and we just have to keep, yeah. we just have to keep correcting it. That's all. We cannot that's right. give up. To, no time to give up. That's right. We have to set up our own learning centers and healing centers to save our own. That's right. And, and you know, uh, one thing, and this comes up quite often because all of us, the three of us I know for sure, uh, love uh, listening to uh, informative talk shows. But one of the yeah. things that... Uh, sort of came up and, and and i'm with it all the way is that when that we ourselves are in a first we have to put ourselves in a position to educate ourselves and then educate those around us because yeah. as you said some people don't even realize that a charter exists mm -hmm. let alone yeah. what it's about so it's necessary for us who know 
to inform those who don't know mm -hmm. and help them see the importance of it mm -hmm. and, and then to uh, to act on it. You know, uh, sometimes they only ask you to, you know, they say, like Theo gave the number uh, to the city clerk's office. There's so many times that the information is provided and all it takes is a telephone call. We'll, we'll call uh, so-and-so's pizza joint or rib joint and get this, that, and the other. I mean, not that you shouldn't eat, but you know, maybe you should also <laughs> make a phone call to somebody who's representing you so that you can see that mm -hmm. you're getting your money's worth because that's what your taxes are paying for. Whether right. you get good service or bad service, you ought to let the person know, hey, look, this ain't working right now. Yeah, right. And I think I heard that this morning, the uh, members of the Charter Commission are supposed to go uh, before a council because their budget was reduced. And it was reduced so much so that they're having a difficult time getting the information out regarding the charter and getting information yeah. out regarding the fact that it's going to be on the ballot August the 3rd. So right. you can also call the city county, county. Right, right. And you can call the council members and uh, tell them that you uh, want them to restore the budget for the charter commissioners. Yeah, and, and what then, was so amazing okay. to you, they was trying and, to act like we can't afford to, uh, right. we can't and, afford to, well, uh, to give the tax any right. well, you know because what? it was bankrupt. Us. Yeah, well, so we that's already a, know the first bankrupt was for trash. Right, well, that's that part is not true because the uh, federal government is about to send almost $1 billion to the that's city right. of Detroit. Now, I want you to hold yeah. on just a moment. We have another caller we want to bring in. Hello, okay. caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how are you viewing us, please? This is David again. I'm watching the channel uh, on television over there. Oh, and it's clear for you. You're 15.2? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Thank yeah, you. I'm over, I'm over here at Gratia Harper. It comes in fine. Gratia and Harper. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if maybe it's the building she's in, but go ahead. I'm, I'm not trying to beat the dead horse, but it won't affect the taste of the water if you stop promoting that label that nestle label you can take that paper label off and it won't affect the water and you won't be promoting nestle oh, to make it come clean fine for everybody to go buy some nestle yeah, water so yeah oh oh oh, oh, oh yeah. that way that okay label, Good. I'm looking at nestle it's like you're promoting nestle yes you gotcha label. no water we, is fine we certainly are can, not you know, we're certainly not off. doing that it's not going to affect the taste of the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you won't be well, we, we will, uh, well, well, I will be looking for a, a different uh, uh, company. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I'm we, just saying that when you set your water down, the label, I mean, you can just pull the paper label off. That's not going to affect the taste of the water. You, you know, it's interesting, uh, Brother Dave, that uh, the engineer just came out and told me to tear the label <laughs> off. <laughs> so so, so I, I'm, I'm on that right now. <laughs> okay. But we are going to promote drinking good water, but just not Nestle's. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can drink the water, but I mean, the water is fine. Mm -hmm. but, right. But, 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 but you like, you're promoting, the other one is you're promoting even Black Wall Street, the one you're promoting the feedback, balance. and you're promoting Nestle water. Right, right, right. right. Well, we eliminate That's Nestle's, but yes. Black Wall Street, I'm going to still represent, like you said, brother. <laughs> Yes. Right, so I'm sitting here looking at the screen, and I'm seeing Nestle. So uh -huh. we support Nestle water with that label on there. Nah. Now, now, it, now it's now it's off. It is off now. It stops saying the name. Don't help it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's off. All right. Yeah, did you remember? Day. Did you remember the other thing you wanted to share? Oh, I have so many things. My father was that uh, they the guy they called the ghetto soldier. So I have endless things to say, but I'm uh, it's not organized right now, so oh, okay. I'm getting off the phone. Oh, all right. All right. Well, well, maybe you'll ride with us on the caravan on the second Sunday in June, June 13th. We'll be meeting up at uh, 12 p.m. on Woodward Avenue at 8 Mile Road, heading south. You're not going to be in the mall parking lot. You're going to be no, on Woodward? No, on Woodward. That's correct. Uh huh. Okay. Heading south. That's towards downtown for anybody who doesn't know which way south is. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, people. All okay, right. thanks, you brother. Too. We appreciate your input. Be safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
I, uh, I'm not understanding how anybody would allow a big corporation to come in and drain the swap and make money off of their assets. I don't understand the, what's really going on. Who's controlling who? Who's in charge? Well, it, it, it seems that the person who can manipulate minds is in charge. Yeah. And the big music industry that is trying yeah. to change the character of the black community in the minds of others is in charge. We yeah. have to share the information with others, the information about the slang and what it means, about the lyrics in these songs. And, and you know, so often <laughs> somebody was saying, <laughs> we got mumble rappers. There are <laughs> mumble rappers are those who uh, put out a record or uh, CD and uh, you don't understand what they're saying until you've heard it about a dozen times. And, and, there, <laughs> and there was something that was said on Facebook that I like. They said, uh, it's, you don't really realize how negative and dirty the lyrics are until you hear one of the children repeating it because mm, they've heard right. it so many times. And then when I saw that, it struck me as right because mm. a child doesn't really know a lot of times they're four, five, six years old mm -hmm. and they, you know, their uh, adult parent who's probably in their teens or early 20s are playing that music around and you don't realize how dirty it sounds till you hear that four or five year old singing the same song and then it strikes you. Mm hmm. Yeah. They start repeating it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I I stick to my, and this is what I believe, that global organized criminal elite been going on since the beginning of time, and that's why both parties seem to be uh, controlled by the same criminal body, where the mission is to control everything and everybody. Uh, this is why we still have sisters' wars police brutality, they don't care about your health, just mind and population control and all your wealth. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have to understand the root of all this evil that continues to go on. Who controls policy makers? Who controls your White House? Mm -hmm. And uh, the rest of the uh, Congress sit in office. And right. you got to remember some of these people are volunteering mm -hmm. and some of these people are propped under uh, a, a pants up choke mm -hmm. where they mm -hmm. have to go along with somebody that is so wrong right. and hurting the people in their community. Right. And, and there was mm -hmm. something that was said recently, and th this uh, covers not only uh, print media uh, and electronic media, but music as well, is where back in the day we all remember there were a lot of diverse independent radio stations as well as newspapers and those type of outlets for information. Now you get conglomerates that uh, I, I know when I've traveled out of town uh, to New York, Chicago, or wherever, I could hear the same thing because there's no local DJ anymore uh, per se. It's just that they've got something where if, if it's Clear Channel, whoever it may be, They've got stations set up in all of the major urban areas across the country, so you don't even have a local DJ like a Martha Jean or a Frantic Urban E. Durham and some of those people who were there before. So there's no independence, mm -hmm. and, and you know, and they have to bow down to whoever the corporates are. Mm -hmm. Same thing right. in media. There's like uh, or music. There's like five or six yes. top companies that control eighty or ninety percent of all the market, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, yes, it's part of a. Uh, a way to indoctrinate and hypnotize right. and uh, dumb us down. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I remember exactly. that Martha Jean owned her station. And she that's owned how the station. so few can control so many. Because yeah. they're organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things, and I know Bob Law has uh, uh, tried to spearhead this in New York, and Big Mike as well, as well as Quabba now, where we let corporate America know uh, that if you're going to support those type of venues that are degrading, dehumanizing, misogynistic, etc., then we can't buy your product. Mm -hmm. uh, we That's the one thing that we have not done since the 1950s, I would say, with the Montgomery bus boycott is mm -hmm. we have not galvanized our economic power the way we could because we some bad people. I mean, we did get yeah. in Atlanta, we mm -hmm. did get... Uh, 
I guess it was Coca Cola and then the American. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah they, they they had to speak up quick because they knew that uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, the mayor, and uh, <laughs> some of them other people down there were playing. Uh, I can't think of the other Stacy Abrams. Abrams. Yeah, they knew that them people. They said, "Look, these people got too much power. We better say <laughs> something." So we have to flex. All yeah, right, and and you know it's important now for our people to learn about the candidates who are out there campaigning for the election of primary, which is August the 3rd. And you okay. learn as much as you can about each of these individuals. We have four people of a nine member city council panel who are not running for re-election. They are not running for re-election. We have uh, some of the offices that have, say, one challenger, and we have two districts that have, oh, God, I don't know, seven people, eight people, large number of folks. Wow. You're right, so uh, uh, to choose from. So those who are in those districts need to learn as much as they can about those candidates so they can make a better yeah. informed decision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, since that they're cutting down and shutting down and they're cutting, uh, they weaponizing uh, the propaganda that's being used to weaponize this people learning and, and, and understanding anything. Mm -hmm. We might have to go back to the bullhorns. Remember how people used to drive down? Yes, the they the did. That's right, through the neighborhood. Uh, and we might have to go back to that as well. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that the pandemic has shut down other ways of uh, connecting and interacting with Connections, people. Connections, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to say this about the uh, caravan. You know, uh, her research uh, meetings wouldn't be a meeting with, without a raffle. So on Sunday, June the 13th, we're going to have a raffle. And included within that raffle is going to be a cake shaped like the continent of Africa. Ooh, during, Black, mm -hmm, <laughs> during Black History Month, we did that. We raffled off a cake shaped like the That's continent of Africa. It, it's, it's unique, and uh, I've, I've never seen another cake shaped like that. I've seen a cake that had a picture of Africa on it, uh, uh -huh. But uh, no, this cake is actually shaped actually like the continent. Shape, yeah. mm -hmm. But we got we got a lot of uh, compliments for that, and uh, people are asking, well, when are you going to do another caravan? Well, yeah. we're going to do another caravan on Sunday, June thirteenth. We'll be That's meeting. That's right. Mm -hmm. if I invited, you know, just running for office. Yeah, I might want to come on and and expose your best to see. Mm -hmm. and, and I would say those who are listening now, since I always mention pen and paper, well, write that down now. You don't have to think, what date was that? What time <laughs> was that? You don't have to think about it. Make a note of it. And, right. and most of our phones have uh, calendars where you can input any information, like you got to pay such and such a bill on a date. Well, put down the caravan for June 13th. Just once you do it, it's there. Mm -hmm. If you got one of those calendars, which some people still have, that hang on the wall, you do that as well. You just go ahead and mark that on your calendar. And then when you look at your calendar, it's already there for you. You don't have to think about, when mm -hmm. was that? Man, I forgot. You don't want to do that to yourself. <laughs> right. uh, because then when you miss out, you say, oh, man, I wish I had her. Well, yeah. now is the time. Yeah. Put it put it on your closet door. Put it on the refrigerator, you know. Yeah. It, it's going to be here sooner than we think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really will be here. Oh, okay. We got a caller back. I think uh, Sylvia Sly Soul dropped, so let's see. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and okay. how you're viewing us? All kind of crazy things going on. Now the call is dropping. When I said the cancer speaking, come to join and I care and expose their uh, campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, we know that there are outside forces that would just <laughs> silence all communication that's positive and that's unifying in our community. But uh, I was going to say earlier, and it just came back to mind, that when we think about, uh, let's just say in the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, and now we're in the 21st century, our people did not have the resources, 
that we have. They did not have the ability to communicate on the level that we have, mm -hmm. yet they did yeah. more than most of us seem to be doing now. So there really is no excuse, and it's an embarrassment to them for us to have all of these tools of communication, all these platforms, and not be able to get things together. But of course, our adversary is very uh, conniving and skillful at being able to diffuse anything. Right. But that's all right. He can do what he wants because we're going to do what we got to do. Right. You know, hey, Tabidi, hmm? Tabidi, you know I've been in jail for 30 days. I got five more days to deal with Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to let you out of Facebook jail. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, so I got three and like me. I probably got to do like they do and use cold words for people to understand what I'm trying to tell them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what I do now because I was in jail, too. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you got to do like your enemy. One thing about the enemy, he'll teach you how to play the game because he's dang exactly. sure playing it. Ah, good point, good point. I, I want to share a, a, a tidbit that uh, I learned from uh, Michael Emotep. And, and that was that um, before Nat Turner, uh, African, African Americans were learning how to read and write. They were learning how to read and write. <laughs> and uh, when um, um, it was found out that uh, some of them were using that skill to escape by mm -hmm. writing uh uh, the papers, you know, they used to carry papers. Yeah. Um, so they could travel from one, say, plantation to another, et cetera. Right. Then <laughs> they also found out that it was a whole lot of white folks who could not read or write. So when they pulled the paper out, they were questioned. And see, here I have my, my papers where I can go from point A to point B. <laughs> and so... So, of course, at that point, this is a, approximately 1831. 1831, wow. this is uh, uh, Nat Turner, you know, the uh, escape that he um, had organized. And they said, no, we got to stop this. <laughs> See, you talked about jealousy. Uh, in addition to jealousy, they were afraid because they were assuming that just a brute force could make a people do exactly what they wanted. And the people would not want to be free. They would want to be subjected to brutal force and a kind right. of inhumanity to man. But that was not mm -hmm. so. So they said, well, no, we can't have them learn to read and write anymore. And, and of right. course, it was it was done, you know, in secret. And, uh, you know, I'd like to hey, recommend hey. it. Hmm? But still, now we see how history repeats because that's why they closed all the schools down. Yep. That's why they oh. give them entertainment to make mm -hmm. them look and act like clowns. And Dr. Laney was was talking about that this morning. She called me and, and she was talking about the schools in Inkster, how they tore the schools down, dug a hole, and pushed all of the brick and mortar, et cetera, in the hole and covered it up. But and that the library. Was, you, right, but that was so that the money would follow the children out of Inkster to other cities like Taylor and Romulus. Anyway, we're now down to our last uh, two minutes of the show. And I want to okay. say thank you so much for calling us. And thank you, David, for uh, calling in and, and staying tuned to the program today. You know, it's not necessary for you to know everything. What is necessary is for you to know how to find what you need when you need it. And we at Hood Research seek out as much as we can to share with you and encourage you to share with us to help us all make better informed decisions. And the number for Hood Research is area code 248-234-2371. Again, the area code is 248-234-2371. The BD. I want to thank uh, Sly Soul for her enlightening commentary and bringing up the uh, charter. I want to thank uh, Brother James Ford for the information that he provided us with. I want to thank Brother Dave, and I want to thank all the viewers who were viewing and listening, and uh, hopefully that you were able to benefit from it. And as I always say, if you want to be nothing, do nothing. But the only problem with doing nothing is you never know when you're finished. All right. 
Tune I in again say next thank you Monday. for taking my call. You stay woke, y'all. <laughs> okay. All righty. And all of you, tune in again next Monday morning at 9 a.m. Tell others. Peace. Peace. Hey there, it's me, Butter, with my new book, The Many Adventures of These Nuts. Let's be nuts about our health. Join me and my friends, Wally Walnut, Almond Cruz, Pumpkin Spice, Tika Tominsky, Morgan Raisin, and Hallie Cranberry, here with rhythm and song to share a fun way to stay safe and healthy. So together, we can all be nuts about our health. Ebook available now on Amazon, or get a hardcover copy at www.thesenutstrailmix.com. That's nuts with a Z. Feedback. 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 Hi, this is Theo Groton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on... Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. 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 Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now. Time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only.